Hey, what's up everybody? This is Shannon here. Welcome back to another episode of Back to the Cardboard. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about <clears throat> here recently one of the interviews that one of the nasty boys put out there concerning the Houston Astros cheating scandal here. And we're also going to be looking at some Cincinnati Reds baseball cards, so stay tuned. <laughs> so just recently, within the last few days, Rob Dibble, maybe you guys have heard of him, the one of the nasty boys that pitched with the Reds from 88 to 93, commented on Rob Manfred, the commissioner for Major League Baseball currently, and he gave his views on that, which I thought was pretty interesting. He said that, uh, you know, Manfred went to the players uh, concerning the investigation, and he told them that, hey, the investigation is going to be based solely on what you guys tell us. Okay, let's think about this for a minute. You've got the head of the organization coming to the members of the organization to basically rat themselves out. Now, you, you got to ask yourself, do you think any criminal in their right mind is going to tell the whole truth? They're only going to tell half-truths because they don't want any repercussions greater than the minimum brought down on them. And I thought that was pretty interesting, a pretty neat point of view. And he said that they're not going to tell on themselves. They're not going to tell on themselves fully. They're not going to get to the point where they might have their World Series championship rings taken from them. And I thought that was a pretty interesting insight there by Mr. Dibble, whether you like him or not. Kudos to him. But he also talked about Robinson Torino's postseason at bat. I don't know if you guys have seen that or not. Uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description. It's worth looking at. It's pretty, pretty crazy. At, Torino's is at he's at bat in the postseason. Something fell out of his pocket during a, a swing, and it flew a couple of feet out in front of the the home plate there. So he just kind of bent over, picked it up, and stepped back into the batter's box and proceeded to stick it down in his pocket, his rear pocket, and couldn't, couldn't, he pushed and pushed and pushed, tried to get it way down in there. Thought he had it in there. Well, he stepped back up to the plate, and you can see clearly that uh, it had tape on it because it stuck to his finger when he pulled his hand out of his back pocket. So here he is with his hand on his bat, that tape dangling off his finger, his thumb, I think it was, and there's something stuck to the tape. I thought it was very interesting because, you know, what was that? Why? You know, it's a piece of tape. Okay, so you had a piece of, say, a medical tape or something like that. During an at-bat, would you just stop and bend over and break your concentration or break your rhythm just to pick up a piece of tape that's laying on the field? I don't think so. I just thought that was real interesting that he would do that and stop and pick that whatever it was up. You know, was it a buzzer? Was it some kind of signaling device? I don't know. But check it out and kind of base a judgment for yourself. So I'll put a link down in the description. And then he went on to talk about several other things. But, it, you know, talking about Manfred, you know, in 1920, Major League Baseball put their first commissioner in. Uh, everybody knows, Kennesaw Mountain Landis. And he was there to basically restore the integrity of the game after the 1919 Black Sox scandal. And he pretty much said, this is his own words, no player that throws a game that entertains proposals or promises to throw a game, no player that sits in a conference to throw a game and doesn't promptly tell his club about it will never play professional baseball ever again. I just kind of paraphrase that, but just think about it. Now, the Astros, they didn't make any promises to throw a game, but can you consider knowing the signs, knowing what pitch is coming? Isn't that a form? 
of getting an upper hand, which in turn can overturn a game. So I don't know. Just think about that. That's Kennesaw Mountain Landis is a pretty smart individual. And there was eight guys on that 1919 Black Sox team that's not going to the Hall of Fame ever. So I don't know. A few things to think about there. So let's move on to some baseball cards. How about it? All right. First up, I've got a let's shine some light on this. A little better, maybe. 1980 Tom Seaver. This is part of my set registry. Let's see there. Tom Seaver, great pitcher for the Reds. All these cards pretty much going to be pretty much on the Reds. Turn the flop back off. All right, I got something here. You know, tops in um, their heyday, I should say, back in the 50s, you know, when they had exclusivity back then, they pretty much issued their regular set for the year, and that was it. Well, in 59, 1959, Fleer jumped into the arena there and issued the Ted Williams set. Well, what did Tops do? They responded by putting baseball cards on the Bazooka Bubblegum brand wrappers there. But, you know, it, in, in several years in the 60s and 70s when they had exclusivity they still issued some oddball stuff. Now, I don't know if that was to leverage its um, MLB license, making more money. I don't know. But in 1981, of course, we all know Don Ross and Fleer jumped into the ring. And Topps decided to work with Coca-Cola and issue team sets. I think you all see my 82 set I shared on here a few months back. They also had to work with Permagraphics that same year to introduce like a credit card set of baseball players. They also produced five by seven photos, home team photos, but they also produced these right here. The scratch offs. Now, there are 108 total players in these scratch offs. Um, and 144 separate panels, I believe. There's many variations. If you consider the backs and um, the advertisement cards and the checklist um, and the different errors involved. It's a really, really neat kind of concept. I think it was designed to compete with mom and dad's lottery tickets. I don't know. But, you know, you take a penny, a dime, or quarter, or nickel, whatever, and scratch off the little black boxes to play the game. You can see there's the uh, scoreboard. You can keep score on. Love it. It's pretty neat. I picked this one up. It's got Mike Easler, Art Howe, and Mr. Rose there on top. Also... Got the one, of course, with Johnny Bench, the Hawk there in the middle, and Omar Marino. Of course, Johnny Bench at the top. See the different advertisement backs, how to, how to play the game and the scoreboard. That was pretty good, pretty neat, perforated. These are perforated right there. Next up, I got a, speaking of Johnny Bench, I got a 81 Topps Record Breaker. Um, this is when in 
80 when Bench passed Yogi Berra for the home run lead uh, by Major League catchers. Of course, since then, we've had Carlton Fisk and Mike Piazza pass Bench, but at the time, Bench held that record. This is the 81 record breaker. Mr. Johnny Bench. Next up, we got a 74 King Griffey Senior rookie card. Uh, Ken Senior there was taken 29th overall in the 69 Major League draft. Spent some years in the Reds farm system there before making it to become a rookie in 73. Spent 19 years in the big leagues, primarily with the Reds, but he also was the Yankees and Braves. And finished up his career in 90 and 91 with the Mariners. What's interesting about that, those two years, he became the first major league player in history to play alongside their son. Of course, you know who that is, King Griffey Jr. So that's the 74 tops King Griffey Senior rookie card. They got a uh, 68 Tony Perez, Tonzio Perez Regal, third baseman, played alongside King Griffey there with the uh, Big Red Machine, seven-time All-Star, often remembered for his 15, 15th inning home run in the 67 All-Star game off Catfish Hunter to win the game. Of course, because of that, he garnered the the All-Star Game MVP. Mr. Perez had an illustrious career and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2000. And then this last card here, take it out of the, the sleeve that's in. Got a 52 Ted Klazuski, the big clue. Oh, Ted cut the sleeves out of his uniform to much chagrin of the uh, Reds management just because it gave him better range of motion for his python biceps there. Ted is a four-time All-Star, uh, National League home run, and RBI leader in 54 he also has two World Series rings, and he also got those World Series rings with the 75 and 76 champions, the Big Red Machine, because he was the hitting coach, one of the hitting coaches for Sparky Anderson. Now you see here, this is the uh, red back version, the 52 cards, one through 80 of that year had either a red back or a black back. And uh, I think the black back is more scarce. Pretty for sure it is. But um, what's interesting about that is card number one, Andy Pofko, and card number 407, is 407 cards in the set that year, are, are two tough cards to come by because just like me in the 70s, I kept my baseball cards in a rubber band. If I kept them numerically, Andy Pofko and Eddie Matthews would suffer the greatest rubber band damage on the corners, wouldn't they? Uh, these came in five cards in a pack for a nickel. So you think about it, and in 52, they were paying a penny apiece for these cards. Of course, number card, card number 311, uh, Mickey Mantle's definitely the most sought after and the most expensive. Just think once upon a time, that could be bought for a penny. What was cool about these cards was the uh, autograph. You see there, Ted's autograph. These were taken directly from their Topps contract. So I thought that's pretty cool. But that's the 52 Redback Ted Klazuski. It's a, just a beautiful card. Even in, you know, a 2.5. I believe that's um, a 
the Crosley Field in the background, but 100% sure there. But anyway, folks, that's all I got. I uh, hope you enjoyed a little bit some of my pickups and uh, weigh in down there and what you think about what Rob Dibble said. And uh, let me know your feelings on it. But until next time, guys. God bless you. God bless America. Hey, remember, all our troops standing in the gap for our freedom, whether it's home or abroad. Until next time. Peace.